For this video, we want to talk about why we want to go full-time RV, where we plan to go first, and then touch on a little bit of what we have actually learned already for the first couple weeks since making this decision. Let's get to it. First, why did we decide to make this crazy move and go full-time RV in the first place? So our first big reason is that we want to make memories with our boys. We want to get outside and spend time with them intentionally. Absolutely. Every single par parent has heard at one point in their parenting life that they have 18 years or 18 summers if your kids are in conventional school to make memories with your kids that are gonna last. And we really wanna capitalize on that time and make sure that our boys know that that's important to us. Well, that's really important for me because my work takes me out of the house a lot. It takes me oh, all over the place. We've moved at least every six months with my work and it gets old and the time goes by really fast and you miss things that you wish you could have been a part of. Like our one-year-old is just now learning how to walk and it's something I don't want to miss. Our two-year-old, you know, learning how to write. You know, our five-year-old is already learning how to spell and read and do first and second grade stuff and those are things I don't want to miss. The second reason is we, between the two of us, we actually have family everywhere, almost in the United States. We have family from Alaska to New Jersey to Florida to Colorado. We even have family out of the country yeah. and all places in between. And we would love to be able to visit them, to have our boys with us to visit them instead of just meeting them once a year or once every four, five, six years, whenever it can actually happen. We would love for them to know them and to be known by them and just really enjoy the time that we have with them. We want our boys to have memories of them, not just be told, oh, you met them once when you were two. Yeah, or just have to look at a photograph and be like, who is that with me? You know, I don't know who that is. You know, we want them to know who their family is. Reason number three, we live in a two bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm on the third floor. And with that comes needing to be aware of noise level. If you guys have ever been around a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and a one-year-old boy, at any point in that stage, you know that they're not quiet and they definitely don't have quiet feet. It's not that they can't be or are intentionally trying to be loud, it's just they're boys and they grow up and that's just the way it is. We want them to not feel like they're getting in trouble just for being boys. Something that we've struggled with is trying to be respectful of our neighbors, but also allowing them to, to be themselves. While we understand that RV living is still very small, obviously, and of course in RV parks you do have neighbors that are really close to you and you do still have to be aware of the noise level. Um, you're not, we're not always planning to be in an RV park. We're planning on trying to be in boondocking situations where we won't necessarily have neighbors right on top of us. It's not the space, it's not the amount of space that bothers us, because we, we could go and live in an RV space-wise, no problem, we can make that work and we would love that. It's the, they ride their bikes in a parking lot where cars are racing around all the time. Yeah. They're, you know, running around the apartment like boys do, playing and whatever, and the neighbors complain that it sounds like a herd of elephants. Reason number four. Reason number four. Living in apartments for the past three to four years, because of how often my job moves us, has made it not feasible for us to look for houses to put down roots because we know that my job is going to move us again. And that's not been cheap putting down deposits, opening new accounts for bills and utilities, changing your address is such a pain. We've not been anywhere long enough to explore the area enough to know where to find a house, what neighborhoods we like. Yeah. And it's just really expensive when you have to continually break your lease. We've done that at every single apartment complex is we've broken our lease because my job moves us and says you gotta be there in the next week. If you're a curious person, like we are and our boys are, you're really wondering where do we plan to go first? Well, the easy answer is 
here. We moved to Chattanooga about six months ago and a couple weeks after we moved here, winter hit and it got really cold. With a young infant, it's really not feasible for us to be spending time outside and exploring when the temperatures were that cold. So we didn't get the chance to really see where we're at yet. And Chattanooga has some pretty awesome trails for hiking and biking, and they've got an amazing aquarium, a zoo, some pretty cool museums. There's a train museum, and there's a kids' discovery museum also that we want to try. I'm excited about the discovery museum. We drove past it once, and it's it looks really cool. Is there something that you have been wanting to do in your own town or city, and you've lived there for so many years, and you just haven't done it? People we visit all the time, we go there and we're like, hey, you know, let's go do this. Well, they tell us, hey, we've never done that before, and they live and it's right there in their backyard. So what we would like to do is we would like to challenge you guys to pick something, pick an adventure, write it down on your calendar, and do it. And we would love for you to comment below and tell us what have you decided to do for your adventure? You don't have to tell us when, but just what have you decided to do for your adventure? And let us know. And when we're traveling, when we travel through or by your city or town, if we like your adventure, we might go do that also. So please let us know what you're gonna do. What have we learned so far? Oh, we have learned a ton. We have learned that moving from a 2,000 plus square foot house to a 1,000 square foot apartment, you do get rid of a lot of stuff. But in looking around our apartment, and you'll see that video soon, there is a lot more work to do. It's really narrowing it down to what is necessary, what do you have to have, and if you have to have it, does it fit? And if it doesn't fit, what are you gonna find that can fit, that serves the same purpose. Technical speaking wise, we have a Surface Pro 3 that does run our video editing, which is Adobe Premiere Pro CC, and it does do it, but it randomly crashes and freezes and can't handle running the program. We can't have that, we, we need to have something more reliable. So the first thing we realized is we needed to buy a serious laptop and we have found one and we will be reviewing it along with all the rest of our camera gear in a later episode. We have also learned that the camera choices we've made, we've chosen all GoPro stuff because of the activities that we're doing. We're not just walking around showing you footage of museums or this or that. We're actually wearing these and riding these on mountain bike trails and I'm riding on single track trails and we needed serious cameras that could take abuse, are waterproof, and that we wouldn't have to worry about. We can mount them in multiple locations, on us, on the bikes, on the bike trailers, on the boys. I want to make sure that you guys can actually see everything that's going on as well. We realized that one or even two cameras wasn't going to really be enough because we tried that and realized you couldn't see one of the kids or um, mm -hmm. couldn't see where we were going. We want to be able to give you guys a full picture of what's actually happening and what we're doing. Well, and I wear the chest mount with the gimbal on it, the Evo SS, and uh, we love it and I actually use the Hero 6 Black in it with an external microphone because the audio on a 6 Black is garbage <laughs> and everybody says it's garbage and so we had to find a solution because we wanted to have one camera that was the A-roll for video and audio. Yeah. Uh, we have since bought the Session, the 5 Session adapter to put on the Evo and I'm curious to see how that's going to work because yeah. it's going to be lighter. Also, on the chest mount, if you just use the regular chest straps, when you're moving, the camera will bounce up and down. So we found a solution. If you buy a youth motocross chest protector, the little roost protector, and you drill a little hole in the center, and you put one of the screws through for like the tripods or the DSLR cameras, you can mount your Evo there and it doesn't move at all. 
there's one guy that does it on YouTube and his footage is just perfectly smooth and so it's worth that investment. If you're interested in any of our camera gear or editing software or hardware, please look at the description below. We're linking to everything that we have and we will be reviewing all of them in a later video. Another thing that we've learned is that our boys have really come out of their shelves being in front of the cameras. They love them. The cameras come out and the first thing Joshua says is, where's my GoPro? He yeah. loves these cameras. Uh, their personalities have completely shown through and that's, that's kind of a breath of fresh air for us because we were a little bit concerned about whether or not having cameras in front of them would change their personalities. And yeah, we were. They also enjoy wearing the cameras. Joshua loves having the GoPro on his helmet when he rides his bike. Yeah. He's so proud that he went straight from a balance bike to a pedal bike with no training wheels and he is wearing a GoPro to show that to you guys and that video will be coming soon also. Something that I personally have been learning and struggling with is learning not to talk over anybody else, uh, especially Jeremy when we do videos like this. I have a tendency to want to jump in and say, hey, and put my opinion in there when he's talking. So that's something that I'm having to learn to do. It actually makes for a lot more editing, which is more time, and we would like to edit less and enjoy more. All right, so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or use your preference of social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We also have a blog, so you can find us on any of those platforms and we do respond pretty quickly on all of them. Now we hope that you guys have actually taken the time to nail down an adventure for yourselves this weekend. Keep an eye out for our Facebook Live video which will be done Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stay tuned for our Chattanooga Aquarium video which will be posted next Thursday.